All right, how's it going, y'all? So today we're going over what I think might be one of the best value adds that Unify has out there, and that is Unify SD-WAN Site Magic. I cannot overemphasize how much time this has saved in deploying site-to-site -site VPNs across multiple sites because it is unbelievable how easy it is to set up a site-to-site -site VPN between two different Unify gateways and even have a true SD-WAN where it will route traffic in the most efficient way possible. It takes five minutes to set these things on up and allows you to do things that otherwise most things like an IPsec VPN just would not let you do, including not having a static IP address on your public IP and even having some sites without public IP addresses at all. And it automatically just figures out the most efficient path to send that data. It is incredibly easy to set up. And with Unify's most recent update, now you can actually have up to a thousand sites on Site Magic. It is awesome. And we're gonna go over everything you need to know about it in this video, as well as how to set it up. Okay, so first off, what is a site site VPN and what is SD-WAN? A site site VPN is pretty much what it sounds like. It is two different networks having a VPN connection in between them. So instead of having everybody at Office B have an open VPN connection to a server in Office A, essentially Office A and Office B have routers that just talk to each other through what's called a site to site VPN. I have one between my home and my office. We're in my office right now. And right here, this is my Site Magic Site to Site VPN. So these are all the different subnets and different networks that sitting right here on my laptop, I can access at my house. And so things like backups, things like employee accessing different servers, all happen super fluidly, incredibly easily. And so site site VPNs are a critical part of businesses, specifically keeping businesses secure. Let's say you've got a internal CRM that you need everybody in all five offices to be able to access. Well, you could go ahead and just open it up to the internet or maybe restrict it to the public IP addresses of the offices, or you could take all that out of the equation and just really simply have a site to site VPN between all the offices. And so now any employee goes to the local IP address of that internal CRM, they get routed straight there in a fully encrypted, fully tunneled connection, and it just keeps security really easy and convenient. But first, I'd like to take a moment to thank the sponsor of today's video, our web developer, Vasazio & Co. So if you remember back about a year ago, we went through a massive rebrand on the channel, new logos, new colors, as well as a brand new consulting arm, Yarbrough Technologies, and we did this all with Matt. So he went through the entire process with us, actually recommended we spin this off, and I cannot speak highly enough of his services. He designed our logos, our website, our new colors, as well as sat down with us and developed a business plan for, hey, what do we want to market? What do we want to look for? How should we approach this? And his advice was honestly invaluable. We went through the entire pro and con of all the decisions with him and helped us figure out what we wanted to make this into. And genuinely, I cannot speak highly enough of him. If you're looking to take your business to the next level, check out Vasazio & Co. in the link in the description. They offer everything from marketing to branding to web development, all the way to developing a full-blown business plan and everything in between. Their work absolutely shows for itself. So check them out down in the link in the description and thank you for sponsoring today's video. So another really good use case for this is offsite backups. Say you've got an office and you wanna be able to have a NAS backed up at your house. So you could use something like Tailscale and that works great, but it's also a little bit more complicated to set up and sometimes the tunnel goes down and you have to restart it and it can be a little fiddly or you could just have a unified network at both locations, click, click, SD-WAN, Site Magic, and now you can just simply send your backups over the encrypted network tunnel to your house and it will just work. It is really that easy and there's only a few things you need to have it set up. So that is the start of what we're talking about, which is what's called a Site-to-Site -site VPN. And so you also may have heard another term and here on Unify's help page, we can see it right here, 
it is SD-WAN. SD-WAN is similar to a site-to-site -site VPN, and really for this, it's an extension of your site-to-site -site VPN. But one of the big problems with standard site-to-site -site VPNs is the fact that you may be going an incredibly inefficient route to get there. You want to find the shortest, easiest path to go from your computer to the server you're trying to contact without having to do a bunch of complex stuff. And so the way that massive enterprises have done it in the past is they will set up a big centralized server room that is in charge of all connections. And essentially every single office has a connection to that. And that's called a hub and spoke method. And what you do is all traffic gets routed through that. So let's say I am in California and I want to contact somebody in San Diego. There's a server in San Diego I need to contact. But the centralized hub is all the way in New York. With that hub and spoke method, you would start at your thing in San Diego, go all the way out to New York, and come back to the Los Angeles site you're trying to reach, which is not very efficient. And so with an SD-WAN, it uses a protocol called BGP to try to figure out, hey, what's the most efficient route to take? What has the fewest hops? What has the shortest latency? What is not being overused? It goes ahead and tries to figure out the most efficient route. When you have only a few sites, it's not that big of a deal. But when you go to many, many, many sites, you can get so much more efficiency by going through and having the shortest path and figuring out the most efficient way to get there. And so that's what SD-WAN is. It allows you to go, hey, site B has the site site VPN also with the AWS. Well, I can go through that and really figure out the most efficient path to take rather than just sending everything to a centralized hub and letting it go from there. And so unified site magic is both of those two things. Okay, so that's what all those terms are. Really for most people, they're caring about the site site VPN and SD-WAN on top of it is quite useful but especially for those larger deployments where you've got offices who you really need to be able to talk to each other and you don't necessarily have like one centralized server that everybody's contacting, having that SD-WAN component of SiteMagic can be incredibly efficient because you can really cut down on internet traffic by 50% a lot of time and have insanely low latency compared to what you could do with a simple hub and spoke. So now there are two options to set up SiteMagic now. Previously, before the new update, there was just the one, which was a mesh. Mesh is exactly what I've laid out there, where everything is connected to everything where possible. So if you have a site with no public IP address, things are not going to be able to connect directly to it, but other things can connect. So it kind of figures out the most efficient route to be able to take and the best connections to make depending on who has public IP addresses and what kind of performance we can get out of the different systems. But because it's connection for every single site to every other site, you get saturated quickly and you have to be very careful with subnet routing because if you have overlapping subnets, it does not work. So if you have more than 20 sites, you then move on to using the hub and spoke method. Now, this is where I've not gotten to investigate the full SD-WAN side of hub and spoke. I think it does allow multi-routing, so you can choose multiple layers to take for these routes, but I've not fully investigated that just yet, so it's not the direct meshing that SD-WAN is, but rather you can have one centralized site or multiple centralized hubs that all these connections come into and go out of. And because now you're limiting down your total number of connections, you can just have one really, really, really powerful router there, like their new Enterprise Fortress Gateways that is that big, beefy unit that handled all that routing. And then now you have up to a thousand tunnels. And so those are your options when you're setting this up. For most smaller deployments, 20 is pretty solid for just about everything. But for these massive deployments, having the hub and spoke method is really useful because they also allow you to play around with subnets and have even overlapping subnets in some cases. All right, so now let's go over how you actually set this up. And the way this works is you need at least two Unify routers and one of them has to have a public IP address, but the more you have, the more you can connect. And from there, you also have to have everybody have the same owner. I've talked to Unify about this. I really wish that would be restricted on out. I would love to be able to have multiple owners and be able to set these settings on up 
or also be able to like offload responsibility to configure this. Because when I set these up for clients, I generally want them to be the owner. I want to be able to be hit by a bus and they have all the keys to the kingdom. And unfortunately with Site Magic, you have to be logged in with the owner's account to do this. This is the only thing left that's like that. So I would love Unify to be able to delegate that on out for cases like that. It would be very useful. So the client state keeps the owner and then just gives me access to be able to configure these settings. But what you do is you come in, you view your sites, and then you just come into this Site Magic SD WAN. And this is where you can see the one I've currently got. And so this is between my house and my office. And I have all the different routes that I have between them. I can edit it by actually adding or removing other networks. And we can also come in over here and create a new one. Now, when we create a new one, you have two different options now, the hub and spoke or the mesh. For most people, I would recommend the mesh unless you are having one of those very large deployments, in which case the hub and spoke allows you much greater control and much greater expandability. After that, all you do is you select your sites and you are able to select what networks you would like to talk, just like on this screen. It is incredibly easy to do. I cannot stress enough how easy this is compared to setting up like open VPN site site VPNs or IPsec VPNs. It is just click, 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 everything's great. And the huge advantage is just being able to see it all in one place and have those mixed IP addresses where some sites might not have a public IP address because you're off in Starlink land. And having the ability for those sites to still hook up to the SD-WAN is awesome. So that is how you would set up the mesh. Very easy, very little customization, and everything's just done for you. We can also see how to set up our hub and spoke. So this is where you've got different options depending on what you want to build out. In the simplest, you have a single hub with multiple spokes off of it. And it can actually generate multiple backup tunnels off your multiple network connections. So say you have backup and primary internet at every single site. You can actually create two VPN tunnels, one on the active, one on the backup. So the millisecond that the internet goes out at one site, it doesn't have to reestablish a network connection. It's already ready to go, and now the route just takes a different way. I believe it will also load balance in between them. With our hubs, we also have the ability to either have a single hub, a single hub with a optional secondary for failover, or even the ability to select which hubs connect to which spokes, and basically have multiple hubs and spokes all interconnected for efficiency. So if you were to have like five offices in California and 10 offices in New York and three offices in Florida, you could basically create each of them in their own islands where they all connect to each other and then have a broad connection across them. And so you can get really in depth with it on your exact needs. And so this is that enterprise Unify setup that everybody's been waiting for and is finally here and is ultra scalable. So those are the two different options. For most people, the simple mesh is absolutely what you're gonna to wanna to do because it just configures the best routes for you. But if you're looking for those massive deployments, the hub and spoke option out there is huge. Okay, so now let's talk about some of the limitations that you may run into when trying to do site magic. And there's two of them that most people will run into. The first and by far the most common is overlapping subnets. So if you have the same subnet, 192.168.1 at both locations, the mesh setup that I'm gonna recommend for just about everybody is not going to be able to differentiate them and route them because well, it's like having two different zip codes in the same country. You don't know where it's supposed to be going. And so that's why it's really important whenever you're setting up a unified network or really any network out there to make the IP addresses unique. There are three different subnets, three different groups of IP addresses that you can choose from whenever you're choosing a local network. 192.168.anything, 10.anything, and 172.16 to 20. So for the most part, I recommend most people choose a 10 dot as 
very few people will use them. And a lot of times like Docker and stuff like to use the 172s. So it's just kind of easier to get everybody on the 10 dots. The way I organize my network is I have my house is 10.40, my office is 10.30. And so that way I know everything's going to be unique within there. And they're also outside of the range where I'm pretty unlikely to go to a coffee shop that's on 10.30. So my site site VPN and my open VPN for my computer will likely work. So it's really important to make sure you don't have overlapping subnets. And the more you can organize like that, the better. The other thing that you may run into is nobody has a public IP address and that's required for that mesh setup. You have to have at least one site with a public IP address. Currently, you cannot use IP6 routing. So if you've got Starlink at one of the sites or both of your sites that you're trying to do site magic with, unfortunately, you would need a third site with a public IP address that could act as the middleman between those two because without a public IP address, you can't establish those routes. And the last thing that I will add on in there is you do have to be the owner of all the sites. So you have to have every single network be owned by the same person to be able to set up that site magic. You can't do it cross owners or anything like that currently, which is unfortunate, but I bet they are going to be expanding that out. And I think Hub and Spoke will also grow it where you can have multiple interconnected sites that then get extra connections as well, because that's one of the really nice advantages of the hub and spoke method. You don't need connections to every single individual unit and can instead just have broader interconnects. All right, well, that's gonna be it for this. I've been wanting to make a video about Unify Site Magic for such a long time because it truly is just one of those features that makes incredibly hard things take two seconds to set up and use. And I've been using it ever since it came out to just simplify deployments. If you have any other questions, put those down in the comments below. And if you wanna hire me, there's a link for that down in the description below. And have a good one, bye.